Hello, Blake Rudis here with EverydayHDR.com and HDRinsider.com. And today I want to talk about how you can use Adobe Camera Raw to process HDR images. Yep, just like you can use a Lightroom, you can use Adobe Camera Raw to do the same thing. So we're going to take these three exposures and we're going to merge them in Adobe Camera Raw to make this HDR image. So let's go ahead and jump into Adobe Camera Raw so I can show you how to do this. All right, so you want to merge your three exposures or five or seven or how many you have in Adobe Camera Raw. Well, there's a couple ways you can do that to start. First, what you can do is you can go down to Bridge, open up Bridge, navigate to those images, select all of them, and then right click and say Open in Camera Raw. That's one way. Or we can go right to that file folder that we have open with our documents in it, drag and click all of these, and then drag them and drop them right here into Photoshop which will open them into Adobe Camera Raw. So now you want to merge these to HDR. Well, you're just going to select the top one, press shift, click the bottom one. That will select all of them. You can control, control click them too if you'd like, but if you just click the top, press shift, click the bottom. Now you're going to go over to where it says film strip. Right here you see this old toggle box, merge to HDR. So typically this might take a while at first to build this preview. It seems like this HDR preview is already pretty well built because of some of the testing I've been doing on this series of images. So what you're gonna see here on the right hand side, you've got merge, you've got cancel, align images and auto tone. Now, if you press align images, I would highly suggest you do that in case there is any movement, especially if you're handheld, make sure that align images is checked. Even if you're on a tripod, it might be a good idea to still select align images just to make sure there was no movement at all in the exposures from one to the next. If you select auto tone, what it's gonna do is it's gonna to automatically tone your image the way Adobe Camera Raw thinks it should be toned. Now this is not a permanent thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave auto tone checked and show you kind of how this works. It's not permanent because as soon as this brings into Adobe Camera Raw and allows us to edit, you'll see that all of the settings over here on the right hand side are gonna change based off that auto tone setting there. Now when you look down here, it says de-ghosting. You've got four different ways you can de-ghost. You can turn de-ghosting off completely where it won't de-ghost anything at all, then you've got some low, medium, and high de-ghosting ranges. Now, unlike many of your other uh, software programs like Photomatix or something like that, you can't select a typical shot to make that your baseline off of like you can in Photomatix, which is very helpful. So you don't really know what you're de-ghosting on. You just know that this is making, uh, making that happen for you. All right, so if you want to show the overlay of that de-ghosting, you can click this to toggle that on and off. If you toggle it off, you're not going to see it. You toggle it on, you're going to see that all of these red marks here are areas where ghosting occurred. Typically, it's going to be in your areas of movement. So your cloud movement, maybe even some of these big wave movements here, those are going to show up. So we'll go ahead and press Merge and then jump into it in Adobe Camera Raw. Before you merge it, it's going to ask you, you have to save this as a digital negative or a .dng, which is the... Uh, basically the raw file for Adobe. So we'll just go ahead and save that right in that same folder. After you save it in that same folder, Camera Raw is gonna work its magic, and then down here right below all three of these exposures, you're going to see our new DNG that was created. So off to the right hand side, I told you before, if you press auto tone, it's not permanent. If you look over here on the right hand side, it's automatically selected what Adobe Camera Raw thinks should be the best tone for this image. If you wanna Put those back to default, you're more than welcome to. Put them back to default. Even if you press auto here, that's essentially going to be the same thing that Adobe Camera Raw did in the merging process. So I'm gonna press default and kind of talk about some of the things that I'm looking for here when I'm making my HDR photograph. So what I wanna do is, obviously I chose HDR for a purpose. I wanted to get the nice clouds and the vast landscape that was here, but also be able to see what happened in my foreground because the foreground had a lot going on. That's the benefit of HDR. If you look at our images over here on the left-hand side, you'll see that this one has a nice exposure for the foreground and everything else is blown out in the back. This one is very dark, so it's perfect for the clouds. And then this one, it's like the in-between. It's like trying to do the best of both worlds, but it can't quite get it. So that's your zero, that's your plus, your negative two and your plus two exposure values when you merge them together in Adobe Camera Raw for the uh, HDR process it allows you to uh, exploit those a little bit better now in past methods of merging in Adobe Camera Raw actually before Adobe Camera Raw when you merged HDR Pro that's a 32-bit file 
However, you'll see here that this is only a 16-bit file that we have here in Adobe Camera Raw. It does not create a 32-bit file for you. As a matter of fact, if you look at that .dng file, it's only about 72 megabytes from a 20 megapixel camera. If it was a 32-bit, it would be about 140 megabytes. It would be a very large file. So to cut down on uh, painful file sizes, uh, they went ahead and made this so that it's only uh, a 16-bit image. But you still get a lot of capability with it. So let's go ahead and look at this. So what I want to do is I'm going to leave my exposure alone for now. I'm really going to be paying attention to my histogram as I make these adjustments. What I want to do is I want to open up the shadows here so I can see what's happening in the foreground. So as I open up those shadows, I can see what's happening in the foreground better. Maybe I want to make the highlights back there a little bit darker so that it makes my gives my clouds a little bit more definition. And I might even bring my whites up just a little bit and maybe pull my blacks up just a little bit. And you see as we're doing this, see it looks kind of washed out. We're losing a lot of our contrast here, and it's also not very bright. So I can bring the exposure up to make this image just a little bit brighter. And then at that point, I might need to bring my whites down a little bit, but also increase my contrast to get some of that color and some of that washed out effect that happened off of the image so it looks a little bit better. So I'll bring my highlights down again to make my cloud areas have a little bit more definition like I was talking about before. And I can even increase and decrease my whites to do that as well. If you look up at the histogram, this is going to be a good telltale sign as to what we need to do here. If we bring the blacks all the way to the left, you can see our image is very dark. As if you look at our histogram, it's pushing it all the way to that dark side, even to the point that we're clipping and we're cutting off a lot of those dark areas. So you can see we can resurrect those if we pull this back a little bit. See our histogram makes a nice little build when we do that. If we go too far to the right, then everything is really washed out and doesn't look right because we don't have any pure black in there and the photo just doesn't look good. So we'll bring that down just a little bit here. Now, because we're in Adobe Camera Raw, we have a lot of really cool options that are available for us. We still have our vibrance down here. We can maybe add some more vibrance to this just to bring in some color. And this isn't this, the vibrance here is not going to oversaturate things to the point that it's really bad unless you bring it all up to plus 100. So I usually bring the vibrance up just a little bit just to those colors that get washed out during this HDR process can actually get a little bit cleaner. Now, another thing we can do here is because we're in Adobe Camera Raw, we can go to our adjustment brush. What I love about the adjustment brush is that I really want to bring out more of the highlight in this area in the foreground to really make my viewer have a sense of being placed in that foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the exposure alone, put that to zero, and I'm going to go into my shadows and I'm going to increase that by about plus 25. And what you can do is you just click on the little negative or plus arrows here. So I'll just plus that up to about plus 25 and then I'll just start painting. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure that this is auto mask mask, and then make sure you have your mask selected here so you can see it. By default, I believe this is white in Adobe Camera Raw 9, so I changed mine to magenta so I can see it a little bit better. And now you can just start painting right on your image here, and this is where our area is going to be affected. Now, I don't want to go too far. I just want to really kind of paint just this foreground area here and not go so far as to hit that area just because I want to keep that separated from the rest of the, the image. And then I'll go ahead and turn that mask off. And you can see that now we can increase those shadows, really bring those shadows up just in that one area that we selected. We can bring up the exposure in just that one area that we selected. We can even bring up our saturation in that one area that we just selected. So what we're doing there, we can bring the clarity. We can make that grass have a little bit more detail in it. So here's the before and the after. There's the before. There's the after. And you can really paint all over this image to get some really interesting desired effects. So we can make a new brush and we can paint up here for the sky. When we paint up for the sky, it's going to have all of the old settings saved for our uh, last brush that we used. So if we look at that mask, that's our mask for our sky. We can go ahead and let's say we'll, we'll bring those shadows down a little bit. We'll bring our saturation up a little bit so that, that area up there gets a little bit brighter. Bring our clarity down because they're clouds. A nice little fluffy kind of look with that clarity down. Maybe even bring our temperature up or our temperature down to, to make the, the color that we want in the background there to kind of match the rest of the image. We'll bring that up a little bit to make it a little bit warmer. We can bring our exposure up, make it really bright. Bring our exposure down, make it really dark. And you see, you get some really unlimited types of controls here when you're doing uh, HDR processing in Adobe Camera Raw. 
So it's very powerful. It's much more powerful than a lot of the other options out there. And you know, a lot there's a lot of hype right now around this whole Lightroom being able to do HDR. But guess what? Adobe Camera Raw 9 can do HDR as well. So if you're using Photoshop CC 2014, you've upgraded uh, to Adobe Camera Raw 9, you'll see those capabilities up here in the film strip. So like we said before, you'll select all of these, just click right here and merge to HDR. The differences between Merged HDR Pro and Merged HDR and Adobe Camera Raw are mainly that you're going to lose that 16 bits of extra depth with Merged HDR Pro being 32 bit and this being 16 bit. Have I seen any serious uh, differences there? Not necessarily. So if you like this tutorial, please go ahead and subscribe, share it with your friends, like it. Uh, just get the word out because there's a lot of really great information here on everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and thank you for watching this.